Well, for more on vaccines developed in China and their pending approval by the WHO, we're joined from New York by Dr. Calvin Sun. He's a full-time practicing attending physician and clinical assistant professor in emergency medicine at Mount Sinai. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. So get us up to speed with a recap of the vaccines currently developed in China. We don't have enough data that's been printed out in the same way that Pfizer has printed out all their data on their website. Uh, what we have is actually um, a retrospective analysis of how the vaccines have been effective. And uh, for example, countries like Brazil are claiming that it's 50% effective, uh, the Chinese vaccine in their country when they distribute it, anywhere to up to 80%. We don't have the hard data that Pfizer has on their uh, paper and better than Moderna and Johnson Johnson. So we were just left with what we're um, seeing from the results of the administration of those vaccines. So anywhere from 50 to 80% is, in my opinion, relative to nothing and no protection better than nothing. But at the same time, when you have the analysis process of choice of Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, all the other things out there, um, you, you know, people may feel more of an entitlement to choice. And that really depends on the individual and their risk tolerance. So then walk us through the WHO review process to get a vaccine authorized for emergency use. Who is involved and what sort of factors do they look at? So it's pretty much a, a balance of political, medical, healthcare, the pragmatism of authorizing a vaccine in the context and circumstance of what's going on in the moment. So where are these uh, vaccines going to be administered? Obviously, is the WHO going to approve them in the United States? No, the United States will not need that because it already has Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson Johnson. It actually has a surplus of vaccine. It has more vaccines than the entire general population. They have to give, it, give them away. They're actually not even using AstraZeneca. So the WHO is not going to say that the Sinovac or the Chinese vaccine will be approved in the United States, but maybe for other countries struggling who don't have access to what developing uh, developed countries already have access to. And it's relative to that. It's the context in which the uh, vaccine will play a role in. And, I, and I, I really do believe in this day and age, beggars can't be choosers. What that means is that when you have a choice between a pandemic that's killing people and having a little bit of protection versus no protection, I think the WHO will make an emergency use authorization for that scenario. Obviously, emergency use authorization is not a full approval. Right. Uh, that takes years, and more people will die if we wait that long. So then talk about the importance of really getting that emergency use authorization approval for these Chinese vaccines. What does that mean for the global fight? So nobody is safe until all of us are safe. If you don't vaccinate a certain country, if you will, or only developed countries get vaccinated, all you need is one person to be our immunocompromised patient to catch COVID uh, when they could have prevented from catching it if they were vaccinated, but they didn't. They got COVID and COVID then mutates in that immunocompromised patient or any patient for that matter, and then becomes the next level pandemic and we have to repeat 2020 all over again because this new mutation somehow escapes all the protection of the vaccine. That is entirely possible and you're just compounding increasing unnecessary risk by letting more and more people get infected unnecessarily when you could have protected them with some kind of protection like a vaccine. Whether it's 50 to 80 percent versus 95 percent uh, or 66, the, the, the goal is to prevent hospitalization, severe symptoms and death. And I think vaccines are achieving this from the places that are vaccinating, you know, robustly. Right. But at the same time, you can't just vaccinate one place. Not all of us safe until all, uh, not all of us safe until everybody's safe. You want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, go together. Once everyone's vaccinated, then the, it, the, the virus is encountering a pinball machine of death where they can't really infect anyone and they cannot mutate. And we can, you know, be done with this earlier than later. And we've certainly seen a growing number of countries continuing to accept the Chinese vaccines. But how much will that WHO approval help to affirm the safety and efficacy of the Chinese vaccines? I think this gives an extra level of liability that countries can rest upon. I mean, remember, this is not just a medical decision, but the WHO have to wrestle with political forces. It's a balance. And there are other countries who have the respective politics and you know forces out there that compel a, a world leader um, with the, the people resting their trust in that person, they can say, you know what, the WHO said is okay, therefore I feel okay doing this. And they have an extra layer of liability and protection with the WHO's backing. So I think a lot of countries are looking forward to something like that. It gives them a little more, a few more options. But obviously, ideally, we you know have a vaccine that's 95% effective for everyone. Um, but that's, you know, pragmatism versus idealism is, has been the name of the game in the last century. And just very quickly, we have about 20 seconds. How would you describe China's overall rollout of the vaccine, both domestically and globally? 
I just wish it was just fast. I can say that for anything. I can say that for the United States, China, Europe. I just wish it was 20 minutes earlier. It's you just you, you, it has to be fast. Uh, we cannot dilly dally and wait for set goals where like I hope to get 40 percent by June. You know, I want 100 percent by yesterday. Uh, anything less is murder because the more and more we, the longer we wait, we just need one person to recombinate that virus and mutate it, and then it basically escapes all our vaccine, and we have to repeat this all over again. It's very likely if we do if we wait that too long.